It's a reality that during our lifetimes, we or our loved ones will experience cancers or genetic conditions such as leukemia or multiple sclerosis. Often mortality rates are high and treatments focus on symptom management rather than cures. Finding a curative treatment would be game-changing and that's why you need to know about cell and gene therapies. There are only 60 of these therapies available today, but with 2,000 clinical trials in progress, things are set to change. The FDA are expecting to be approving between 10 and 20 of these new therapies each year from 2025. I'm here at PA's Global Innovation and Technology Centre, where I'm meeting two of our experts, Paolo Siciliano and Anu Solanke. They are experts leading our projects in cell and gene therapies, and they'll be telling me how they work and the key to unlocking their accessibility. Paolo, hi Anu. Hi Sean. Hi Sean, good to see you. Anu, can you tell me what cell and gene therapies are? Cell and gene therapies are a new class of treatment that help your body fight potentially uncurable diseases. They've got massive potential because they take human cells or genetic material and allow body's function to be restored. Okay, and why is this revolutionary to the medicines we have today, Paolo? So the main reason why cell and gene therapies are different from current drugs, for example, ibuprofen, paracetamol, insulin or chemotherapy, for example, is the fact that they leverage the body's innate ability to heal and change. Uh, decades of research in genetics, cell and molecular biology have led to a paradigm shift in therapeutics. So we now know how to modify genes, how to modify cells, to teach our bodies how to fight disease or restore functions that have been lost uh, due to, for example, to a genetic condition. So what was once only a research topic where people were talking about at conferences, it's now part of everyday medicine. Okay, so revolutionary in terms of technology advancement. Will it also be revolutionary for patients? Yes, it is, and uh, mainly for three main reasons. So first of all, uh, cell and gene therapy provides a treatment, and I mean a curative treatment, for diseases that have no other options, no other treatment, beyond the mere symptom management to uh, improve quality of life or to extend life expectancy. Uh, think about uh, spinal muscular atrophy or beta thalassemia, for example. Secondly, they provide an alternative to patients for whom uh, other therapies did not work. Uh, think about leukemia patients for whom uh, radiotherapy or chemotherapy was unsuccessful. And last but not least, their potential is hypothetically unlimited. With over 2,000 clinical trials active globally at the moment, with a huge pipeline of potential treatments for a wide range of conditions, from cardiovascular disorders to metabolic conditions to neurodegenerative disorders. So it's really a true game changer. Let's head down to the labs and find out how they work. We're here in one of PA's labs, as you can hear by the noisy machinery. Anu, can you tell me how cell and gene therapies work? Yeah, so let's start with a the cell. These are the basic building blocks of your human body, and there are trillions of them in your body. Each of them has a specific function. So for example, your heart, the muscle cells in your heart help your heart beat, and neurons take signals from your brain to your limbs so you can move. Now within each of these cells, there's a nucleus. And within that nucleus, there's some DNA. Parts of that DNA form genes. And these are the things that through a number of steps form proteins. And these are crucial for your body's functions. So for example, proteins form antibodies that help you fight a common cold. They form the enzymes that help you digest your food. And in your eye, they form structures that enable you to see. If for some reason there's a change in that genetic code, the way that your cells behave and the way that proteins are produced can alter. So that happens in certain types of cancer where there's a genetic change and that forms a mutation leading to the cancer. There are also inherited diseases where because a protein is or isn't present, it can have life-changing consequences. So this is the basic premise of cell and gene therapy. And it's interesting to note that cell and gene therapy are two different things. Cell therapy is where you inject cells back to your patient and gene therapy is where you inject genetic material to help treat diseases. 
Paolo, can you tell me a bit about the difference between those two things? Sure. I think we can use some examples to help us visualize this. Let's talk about the first group, what we call cell therapies. There are certain therapies within this area that are mainly based on collecting white blood cells from a patient tumor, the area around the tumor. And some of the cells are naturally able to find and kill the tumor cells. However, there is not enough of them in our body. So what we do, we take them out, we throw them in the lab to a point where there's enough of them, so a higher number, and we then re-inject them into the patient where they now can find the disease. Some of these therapies are finding a lot of application, for example, in um, the treatment for skin cancer. The second group is what we call in vivo gene therapy. Most of us might have heard about the first child in the UK being treated for uh, spinal muscular atrophy uh, this year with gene therapy. Uh, this is a genetic disease that leads to uh, death in children, unfortunately, and there's no other treatment for this condition. So the gene therapy for this disease is based on genetic material that is created in a lab, like this one, and then injected into a patient where it will substitute an, a gene that is missing or malfunctioning in this patient causing the disease. The last group uh, of, of these therapies is somehow at the intersection between the first two and is what we call ex vivo gene therapies. Some of these therapies are based, like the first one, on collecting white blood cells from our patients, for example, with leukemia. And once we have these cells out of the patient body, we can now modify their genetic material in order to teach these cells how to recognize the cancer and kill it. So once they're still in the lab and already transformed, we then grow them in numbers and then re-inject them into the patient. Some of these therapies, you might have heard of what is called CAR-T. They've been extremely successful in treating conditions such as leukemia with success rate of uh, almost, well, above 90%. These therapies have such great success rates. Why aren't we seeing more of them on the market? So one of the hurdles that we need to overcome is the accessibility to patients. So like you said, these have wide-ranging implications and could be life-changing for a number of patients. But they're costly because the therapies are complex and they're quite new to the market still. So there are three things that we need to look at. The first is early stage research, so how we can identify diseases that can benefit from this type of cell and gene therapy. The second is around the manufacturing process. So we're looking at inherent properties of cell and gene therapy that we just need to work around. Things like short shelf life and the need to store these therapies at really cold temperatures. We also need to consider where the patient lives compared to where you're making these therapies. And the final thing is the commercial considerations. And all of these things together mean that these therapies are incredibly expensive. So the complexity and the cost together means they're not accessible to the number of patients we would like. Has PA been involved in overcoming some of those challenges? Yes, we have. And, uh, and at the moment, we're working on a number of the challenges that uh, Anna has just described. Just to give you some examples, uh, we are helping clients with defining the strategy around cell and gene therapy and helping them to understand how to bring new products and services into this market. Um, we're working with therapy manufacturers to help them improve in their manufacturing process and helping them with the transition between preclinical into clinical and commercial phase manufacturing. Um, and last but not least, and probably most importantly, we are at the forefront of technology development this, in this space. We're helping clients developing new innovative technologies and machines that can produce this therapy in a faster, cheaper and better way and make them more accessible to patients in need. And with all of that in mind, how do you feel about the future of cell and gene therapy? I think this is an incredibly exciting field to be involved with. We're learning which diseases can be treated with this type of therapy. And there are a handful of commercial products that are already on the market. These are really paving the way that, for those that are still in development. And when I think about my friends and family that could be treated by this, it could be life-changing. Paolo, do you agree? Yes, Sean, I totally agree with, uh, with Anno. I really think the cell and gene therapy and regenerative medicine in general would really change the way we approach medicine and disease treatment. However, I must say that collaboration amongst therapy manufacturers, equipment manufacturers, regulators and payers is necessary to enable the wider adoption of these therapies and to get them to more patients in need. Thank you, Paolo. Thank you, Anu. It's been brilliant to hear about how cell and gene therapies work. It's hard to think about another technology that's going to have such an impact on each of our lives. 
We hope that you join us again for another episode of How Things Work at PA's Global Innovation and Technology Centre.